Parental discretion is advised. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza. The podcasters. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 467 for this April 28th, 2015. I'm Mike Sorg, at Sorgatron on the Twitter and live from the Pittsburgh PA Studios Mayhem Studios, uh, ready to rock it with the wrestling. First of all, big uh, 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 happy birthday to DJ Lunchbox, Papa Lunchbox. He's out celebrating as he does, which probably means he's drunk underneath the bridge by now. So oh, yeah. uh, good luck to him uh, on surviving his birthday. Uh, so uh, with us in the studio, or not in the studio, none of you guys are here. I'm all alone. <laughs> Nobody's in the studio. I'm a lonely guy in a basement doing a podcast right now. <laughs> but with me uh, is the Riz. Hi, Sorg. Hi, Riz. How you How doing? How are you doing today? How you doing? I'm leaving titles I'm, up for later. Uh, I'm doing hi. swell. How are you doing? All right. All right. Also all with right. us from San Antonio, Texas, it is Amon to please of the great inspire pro wrestling yes indeed uh happy to be back on the show uh i also do want to wish a very happy birthday to mr dj lunchbox and uh, lb if you're listening right now um i'll meet you under the bridge in about two hours <laughs> <laughs> also coming at us from poughkeepsie in new york it is mad mike hello sorgelstein how are you doing tonight this is my third podcast i'm exhausted <laughs> okay also with us from johnstown pa climbing into your webcam wow. rooms i'm extremely focused for tonight's podcast is bobby fj town oh, hi everybody i just um talked about star tours yes that were completely illegible what <laughs> they, they were misspelled and it was it was um, of course, you can uh, hear a little bit of that and so much more on Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can support the show uh, and, and get some special stuff, including some stuff that, you know, first to see some of the behind-the-scenes stuff, some fun stuff uh, going on there, and a little bit of report on what's going on usually uh, around the show. And, and happy birthday, Lunchbox. And oh, a happy birthday, Lunchbox, of course. And uh, also, you can drop a line. Uh, we're at the email address of... Good time. Good time. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. That is right. And you can drop us a line at that phone number for the hotline, 412-206-WMS0. And, and let us know your thoughts on wrestling, things going on, thoughts about the show, uh, stuff we should do, should stop doing. Uh, maybe we shouldn't let that somebody on the show anymore. Hey. What? <laughs> what every, I do? Now, everybody felt goatee on that one. That's interesting. Oh, that was a nice <laughs> yeah, social yeah, experiment. Yeah, that really just reveals a lot about us. Also, uh, Wait, you can what? subscribe no. to the show if we haven't scared you away yet at WrestlingMayhemShow.com on your iTunes, YouTube, and all kinds of other places, of course. And big thanks to Basic Sickness for intro, outro songs for this. Check them out at BasicSickness.com. Join us here live, live.WrestlingMayhemShow.com about 8 p.m. Eastern time. And when we get into things. Again, I mentioned the Patreon supporters before. Big thanks to those of Sorpor us for so long including the wrestling revolution.com zero giving us some orders as we were doing gold earlier and also the diggity so there you go uh so let's get right into it first topic of the day king of the ring also spoiler alert alert. i'm afraid i've got i'm afraid i got some breaking news so you haven't watched this yet Uh, i get it props to mac harlan's um... props to mac harlan's for that one by the way um (laughs) but it no so king ring happened i skimmed it while we're doing other podcasts to kind of see what was happening i will rewatch this later of course um but uh the news Cover your ears, Bobby, if you don't want to be spoiled for this no, segment. I spoiled. Oh, okay. <laughs> is uh, 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 your new King of the Ring, and I think the most appropriate choice in this yep. case, is uh-huh. Bad News Bearers. Matt Collins, you've been justified. King I'm so Dog happy. Boner. King Dog Boner. King he Dog Boner. It. He deserves that after losing month after month. Right, right. I mean, 
I mean, it, it, it makes sense. It's something, and 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 I don't know. I don't think it's a response per se to the IC title disappearing. Uh-huh. You know, uh, if anything, maybe would would have had like Daniel Bryan involved in this sort of thing, but uh, but but no, I I, I really enjoy it. So we discussed this a lot on the Raw wrap up, of course, since a lot of the King of Ring happened on Raw last mm-hmm. night. Um, but uh, but no, I really I really enjoy it that they brought back to tournament. I love tournaments, um, and 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 I thought it was a lot of fun. And and from what I saw uh, of tonight, again, I'll rewatch it later. Uh, it looked like we had some really great matches to really kick this thing off. Um, uh, Sheamus got busted. <laughs> oh no he got busted open so um if any of you guys weren't watching live and you watch it afterwards and you don't see shame is gushing <laughs> blood from his eye they edited that yeah <laughs> yeah because uh the finish the first match was kind of stupid it was ziggler came out for a distraction shocker yeah yeah we're kind of setting yeah. up for that one weren't we yeah but the, but the uh, barrett the barrett archery match actually seemed pretty good the Bear Archer match actually seemed pretty good from what I was able to see. Good. Do you do you think this will lead to Barrett getting s- some more opportunities down the line? Do you think this is going to result in anything? Because, I mean, King of the Ring, as far as like what it does for the wrestler that wins it, it's always sort of hit and miss. Mm-hmm. Billy Gunn. What? I, Billy w- Gunn. I, wish, I wish they'd go back to if you won King of the Ring, you were number one contender for SummerSlam. Yeah. Yeah, that would be nice. I um, wish they would go back to that because then you could have like a build. Like you could have Wade Barrett just randomly insert himself in the authority scenes. Like, so Seth Rollins, I'll see if you. I've got some bad news for you. Like, just stuff like that. You know? I I think they should bring King of the Ring back as a pay per view. Yeah, like I, I'm surprised this whole tournament was just one day. What or what is technically it? two? Okay. But... Legitimate question. What. Why is payback two months after WrestleMania? Mm. Wasn't payback usually after WrestleMania? No, no, you're thinking backlash. backlash. You're oh, thinking backlash. backlash. Okay. Well, what are we paying back for? Well, the, the free we're paying, that we just we're, paying back, we're paying back all the feuds that should have ended in WrestleMania. We're okay. paying back all the rules that got extreme, Bobby. Can, and the King free money. Payback is better than King, or King of the Rings is better than Payback. Listen, listen, extreme rules. Listen, extreme rules. Uh, like, like we said, still, still caged shenanigans last week, right? And we had that. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot mm-hmm. of shenanigans throughout the night with the wonky <laughs> rules and everything, with arses not being kissed and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so Payback is the payback on the things that happened there. Um, you hit me with a chair, or you did not properly kiss my ass. Whatever it is, there will be payback. Okay. <laughs> what? What is that? Not, you don't like that? You don't like that? Wait, whoa, Eamon, you don't like that? No, no, no I, I, in theory, that's cool. But also, like, there's some of these feuds, and also like the the stipulations that are given to the feuds. Where it's like, I'm cool with these ending. Like, yes. I'm cool with this like extreme rules ending these feuds. Mm-hmm. You know um, what I mean? What feud ended? Nothing ended. No, nothing, nothing ended. Well, Roman Reigns? That's true. Roman Reigns, I guess, is the one. Well, until Nick Harper and Dean Ambrose, kind of, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It would yeah. kind of have Har- to be. Honestly, Harper and Ambrose was the most successful as far as, like, a, a Nick. I'm sorry, like, an extreme sort of match like that should be a, a feud ender. Or, mm-hmm. or, at the very least, like, should be well, a, an impactful thing, like, you know, leading to something. But I just, I don't know. I, I felt, obviously, well, Kind of jumping ahead here. Yeah, but. we're ju- we're jumping. In. We're going to talk more about extreme yeah. rules in a bit, but with the King of the Ring, and let me let me parlay this into the conversation. I think we were going to try to do later, but um, they're using King of the Ring as another. Oh, hey, it's free WWE Network Month. You know, trying mm-hmm. to get you guys into this. What mm-hmm. do you think of them using something like this in, in that way for the network? I like it. You like, I like it? it? Makes sense. It, it's it's nostalgia factor for one. Mm-hmm. It draws people in. It says, "Hey, I remember this." And it gets people to view their stuff for free and then think about going to purchase it for nine ninety nine. And it's not without precedence either. I think it's better than the post-match half-empty arena in Buffalo that I was there for when uh, Rusev <laughs> won the belt. And that was a network exclusive. It's something more interesting. Uh-huh. Uh, they obviously probably put it before SmackDown tonight on the, at the, uh, whatever taping. And for everybody there local, surprise you got the finals of the king of the ring you know yeah. instead of main event or something i guess um you know and, and it's not like it's without precedence we have that we haven't had king of the ring 
basically a part of SmackDown or something over the years. Even before it was a pay-per-view, it was just a tournament they did, apparently. Mm -hmm. So, like, that was not a pay-per-view. It was, like, pretty much a spot show? Yeah. So. And maybe, maybe, uh, and maybe this was a test, like, for, for WWE to see whether or not the King of the Ring is still... Here's good. here's an yeah, interesting question. Oh, like, g- good, like you know how Hell in the Cell has now been watered down, right? Or yeah. or what was it? like the Royal Rumble has been declining for whatever reason, right? Uh, they're trying to see if the King of the Ring can be a standalone pay per view, mm-hmm. and it, it can. By the way, here's the other question: when when we classify these as pay per views, etc., this is a world where we have the takeover events on WWE Network. Does the King of Ring need to be a standalone pay-per-view, as we think, or special event? I'm seeing you shaking your head, Mad Mike, and I want you to comment. But uh, you know, but can it just survive as these special events? Maybe as a lead-in from Raw or something to get you to go check out the your pay-per-view now is the $9.99 you pay every month. And this is just one of the extra special things that you get. Mike, your thoughts? I think it should be a network-exclusive tournament. Have all tournament matches... On the network in the spot where main event is, like Tuesday at 8 o'clock, they're taping anyway Mm -hmm. because they have to tape main event for the foreign markets. So have that be like a big ass tournament. Like put 16 guys in there, have three matches each week, and you can do a whole real good tournament. And you can just show recaps of it on Raw and SmackDown. Don't show the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Make people. Force people to want to see this by just having three matches, give them about 15, 20 minutes each. So you fill up a whole hour, have them be awesome matches, and just have the tournament bracket go like that. And then at the for the finals, put that on pay per view. Right. Then you can I, I think highlight package. I, I think it's also a good idea to do like a. Uh, obviously, I don't think you could do it with like a 16-man tournament, but like an eight-man tournament as a pay-per-view for the fact that the pay-per-view market is still, even though we're down to 12, it's still very oversaturated. Mm-hmm. And I think breaking up, you know, having just one pay-per-view where we maybe have one or two non-tournament matches, but the rest is a, just a tournament, and it's you know has some storyline stuff, but it's mainly just like good wrestling matches. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like mm-hmm. that that allows mm-hmm. them not to force themselves to book a whole pay-per-view when they aren't creative enough to book it. You right. know? So right. It's kind of like a Super Indie, the way that Eamon's trying to ex- explain it. Uh, and Super Indie is always fun to be with, be at. And this is this mm-hmm. is IWC, International Wrestling Cartels. Yeah, this is the event. IWC thing. Uh, yeah. But I, I do agree with that. Like, mm-hmm. it, If they just book it that way, mm-hmm. you don't have to really do much with it. It's mm-hmm. just, hey, here we go. We're doing yeah. this. Here's some good matches. Here's yeah, here's some yeah. matches. Have fun. Our, and, and and you know, and my feeling on this is, it feels like, and I don't I don't know how many of you guys were in this position. I'm I'm again, you know, I'm, I'm somebody that didn't have cable satellite until 1996. So one of the reasons I stopped watching wrestling was I didn't have any good wrestling to watch. I didn't have pay per views. I didn't even have Monday Night Raw. Right. I had superstars or whatever that became in that era. Right. right. Um, and, and all the cool stuff was happening on USA Network or on the pay-per-views or, or, or something like that. You know, we, we didn't get Saturday night's main event anymore for a period there. Um, so so th- I feel like I feel like this is kind of that thing where, hey, look, all the cool stuff is happening over here. Whereas back then it was something to get me to get cable, which wasn't even something that was possible at the time. Now it's it's moving you over here. They're kind of the masters of this, right? And have been for thirty or forty years, right? But, so, but are they? Because there's a lot of stuff that they could be doing to plug the network even more, and they don't do it. What, like how how do you mean? I mean, I feel like I feel like there's a lot of talk. I mean, they're like, hey, we got this new event. Hey, we got this thing coming on. Hey, we got this program with Jerry Springer. You know, hey, NXT is happening. This past week though, but NXT. Has gotten almost zero promotion there was until a this, this week. week. Yeah, until this week, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I know. I'm with you on that. I, from the start. I completely like, agree with you on that. But I think I think that is a project that wasn't supposed to float as high as it did. 
but you know now what? it is. Now that it is. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. They're touring. You, did you yeah. remember? Wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's take this back a bit. You remember when WCW, owned by Time Warner, or Turner, or whatever, was the thing? And it, and and remember when like Turner went away and they canned it, even though it was one of the highest rated programs. And that's how we had the death of WCW. There, WWE is a corporation. I think there's there's forces. When we talk about, look what happens with the Divas, and we've been talking about on Mayhem Minute last week about how the Divas are treated and not, you know, not as heels faces and this other thing versus how are they treated on NXT. And you have Sarah Del Rey getting featured in, on Vice.com uh, this week uh, and, and, and on WWE.com about what they're doing in NXT, right? Uh, you know, that, that, that NXT doesn't pop up on Raw. I think, you know, again, there's a lot of hands in this. And I think there's some corporate hands that are saying, yeah, that's not good enough for us. You know, oh, that's great for NXT, right. whatever. Right. But and I know you can say, well, well, Triple H should be the one that matters. Like, no, he's not the only one. Kevin Dunn's the one that matters in certain aspects. Uh, Vince is the one that matters in certain aspects, et cetera, et cetera, down the line. And I think, I think, I think we're, it, it's big enough. I think there's like wrestling infighting going on here on how to treat women. These up and coming guys, NXT, um, and, and all these different aspects of this, and and plus, you know, they're stretched thin enough trying to put together a three hour show. So I going, think I think that's where you find your distinction there. Sorry, Amon, go ahead. No, that's okay. Um, going back to the network stuff, um, and and talking about like the content they're doing, um, we're, st- we're starting to see a bit of a rise in it now, but still not as much. Um, because I feel like the network has been really more garnered to nostalgia. Like, mm-hmm. here's all the old pay-per-views, and here's all, you know, Attitude Era Raws and old Nitros and all this stuff. Which is a good and, start. Which is a yeah, good start. Which is a good start, but I feel like they should be garnering more to, like, live content. Like you mentioned, content that, you know, you need to the, – the, the, the important stuff's on the network. Right, you know what I mean, like, like the Sheamus Rusev US title match, like the Sheamus Rusev top, like like the King of the Ring tournament, you know, like even like the podcast stuff they've been doing, you know, I, I feel like if they garnered more towards their, and, and not that they should get rid of the nostalgia stuff because I'm sure that's a big reason why people are buying the network, but if there was more, if it was more even between nostalgia and um, current content and and important stuff for you know WWE currently then i feel like they would be much better off mm. um well, I, you're never gonna pull even with the nostalgia because they have so much archive content right oh yeah right. they don't have enough manpower or anything like that to produce anything oh. a, any amount of new content that would equal the nostalgia but even right. like okay you guys saw the renee young thing premiere tonight also the Corey mm. grace thing there are only 10 minute spots but there, oh. there but there's still other content that's in there, right? It's still something they could sprinkle through this and you can pick up online. I think they're maybe trying to get a little bit of the YouTube generation by having these little spots. Yeah. Um, but cool. the, and you talk about that manpower, they're already traveling all over the country, all over the world. And that they were sitting in, where did anybody catch where they were? It was a Renee Young just sitting in a coffee shop with Steph Rollins, right? <laughs> I, yeah. Unfiltered, something like that. And they're like, they're, they're, they're in some country. Like over easy. Over easy. <laughs> that was the name of the place. I forget. But, more but what. they're already going to these places. You send an extra camera crew, you know, or hire one that's not a wrestling camera crew, just a go film travel documentary camera crew or something. Camera right? guy. You can you get a crew. You, 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 well, you need a no. You you need a crew. You need a boom mic. You need <laughs> you this. Need you need eye, a grip. You just need an when you're on this level, you need <laughs> at Give least a GoPro and just send them the home. <laughs> Make sure you don't come in horizontally though. <laughs> it's not conducive to television. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. But but or get a stringer, which is a new term that Matt Collins learned to me. Um, and locally, in whatever country that is, right? And then you have all these wow. features. Um, and, you know, it, you're 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 kind of. You know, we, oh, we're not just going to do the show. Now we're filming this other content. Not just everybody but hanging I have a with the. Feeling you're going to get a lot of blowback from the talent about that. Why? Because they avoid the total divas cameras as it is. Yeah, they avoid the total divas cameras, but they're all doing YouTube shows and doing and doing stuff like that. That's a difference. That's, that's stuff that they're scheduled for. Right. Like, but that this would just be filming them when they're traveling and but, supposedly relaxing. No, 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 no. They're going to be just as scheduled for this as well. They already they already do that on a bit lesser levels. Like like uh, 
it, it's not like a highly watched thing on the network, but they do that this week in WWE, whatever show right, that Scott right. Stanford hosts, where it's been, like they had, I watched the one, they showed it before the pay-per-view, and it was like The Miz in London giving us a tour of London and, and all this stuff. Right. So they're still, they're already doing this stuff. And they've always done that kind of stuff for segments anyways, so now they're yeah. just doing, have more places to put those segments. And they're, actually, they have a, not too long ago, they had Neville come back, you know, Give us a tour of his home, right. Manchester. That's stuff they that do stuff. all the time, and, and plus, I think they were already expanding that to a point when they were doing the YouTube content. Because a lot of stuff you're seeing now would have been a YouTube thing they did, but now they're putting a little more production into it, a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I think they're just—it's I, I, really just kind of maximizing that opportunity at this point. So you just want WWE Confidential to come back? Well, hey, in the hey, long yeah. run, don't we all? I mean, <laughs> seriously. I, mean, Gino, I just want Gene to have a job. I, I yeah. you know what? I just want that. I, I, you know, even they just repost those uh, confidential episodes. I think just needs to happen. They have to. They have to. Titans. It's kind mm -hmm. of you know all that's so at some per, at some point. There's just going to be a point where they just like, hey, here's every episode of Jacked. Release the oh. release there's the Jackin. There's a lot of good matches on Jack. I know, but it, we, Wait, it's, it's really great. Release, like some heat episodes too. So some heat episodes, something like that. Sure, why not? Then they release like Saturday they had, night. They had some heat episodes they released for a period there, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Like just randomly, like hey, here's some heat. It, it, maybe it's like a year of it or something. But but like so, random stuff. Like Chachi was watching. He, Chachi's been watching the Attitude Era that came out, the 1998 stuff, and and he's watching. And and the RWA Heavyweight Champion here locally, it was jobbing in a um, in a in a handicap match against. <laughs> Kurgan, and we're like, wait, I know that guy. You know, I mean, going back and seeing a, the find the jacked with AJ Styles on it, or, or whoever else might have popped up so there. Dean Ambrose with pink hair. Gene go to Velocity and watch uh, Chuck Palumbo versus really? the River Rat. There you, you go. Can find, uh, you can find Sunday Night Heat where Mickey James teamed up with CM Punk. There you go. There you go. I mean, you know, stuff like that. You know, I think I think there's a there's something for it for, to dig in, and hopefully they've tagged everything appropriately. Right. I'm questioning that because some of the searches. Hey, eh. hey, and it's hey. not your fault, Mike. It's hey. the programmers. Okay. <laughs> no, trust me. There's some that, of these. That shit was tagged, Sorg. Uh, there's some of these I pulled up, and there's like no markings on them, and I'm like, oh. I should be able to type in John Morrison. Or Johnny Nitro and and it Johnny should, Mundo. Sorry. It should. Pop. What if we no, type no. in Chris it's, Benoit? Is anything? I don't know. Uh, uh, all right. Um, little inside information that will never happen, Ritz. <laughs> every um, we tag Chris Benoit in every segment that he's in, but uh, we had a button on our uh, program called Flag. We only use that for three things, four things: the word "fuck." Boobies, Owen Hart, and Ooh. Chris Benoit. Aww. Aww. Well, no, oh, that, Owen that was because, because, that was because we the... did this. Uh, they still had the legal issues with... Um, right. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. All right. I, this is a great discussion. I know we'll probably get into aspects of this in our next <laughs> topic here. But I uh, want to get to uh, plug in. First of all, hey, uh, IndieWrestling.us, I want to let you know, is under construction. We're working what? on some stuff. We what? have a friend of the show. He's 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 working on something cool. We are separating that as a full on its own store. Oh. So you're gonna get all your international wrestling cartel, all your renegade wrestling alliance, vicious outcast wrestling, and maybe a couple more coming up. We're working on some deals. Thank we're really at, we're expanding the family. Prime wrestling, the great prime wrestling uh, history, and we have more releases coming soon for that. Right now, you can get some uh, best ofs with uh, Gregory Iron. I, I haven't checked it out. I've been seeing all the tweets about it. Have you seen this 12 minute Gregory Iron Zach Gowan uh, documentary that's been going around? One Zach Gowan with a beard, very strange to me. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but go check that out. And friends, Zach Gowan's another one. We have uh, Finding Zach Gowan, the great documentary. We we had a chance to work with uh with him and joe dobrowski on uh, a couple years ago about his story in wwe f was it f at the time maybe with hulk hogan and no, all that e. stuff no, was it, it, e. it has already turned to e um you know that and and and, and his trial you know losing the leg and getting over that and his drug addiction after wwe um a really really great uh a touching story and i'm glad to see that's getting out even more with this uh documentary uh of him with another great story and gregor iron of course uh so in the meantime if you go there we got a link over there uh pittsburghwrestling.com will get you to the old store all those releases are out there you can get the digital download right now for rwa spring fling 2015 where fans had straps at ringside 
for the cruiserweight title match between no, it wasn't yeah. even a title match. It was it was actually non sanctioned. Sanjay Dutt against Shane Andrews, a great match. Every time those two get into the ring, um, I've seen those fans. You've seen those fans. They should not have straps. They brought weapons, <laughs> and we're allowed Ooh. to use them. That's so that, you know, so go see how that turned out. It's eight uh, seven ninety nine over there. PittsburghWrestling dot com. Check them out. It supports Sorgatron Media, which by proxy supports the show and it's wrestling guys come on support indie wrestling so let's yeah, get right into our I next like topic this. speaking of wrestling in general well i guess the entire show <laughs> it's kind of everything on the show I, 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 <laughs> well it's mostly everything except when we don't talk about wrestling extreme stepping up uh who were the winners and losers of this past pay-per-view hey, here's another can i have a side distinction here this goes to our old conversation are we having a sidebar here a sidebar Sidebar. 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 Sorry. Right. Get real close. Get real close, guys. Get real close. Like this. Okay. You guys ready? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Can we stop calling them pay-per-views? I know we're used to it. No. No. Because <laughs> you still, still pay, pay for them. Are, are, are you still paying for them? Oh, Never. Okay. Here's the thing. Oh, are, you, are you still viewing Yeah, but at this point, them? like, the, tough enough. For the new members. What's that? For the new members, like, they got it to see it for free. I was gonna say I'm the only one that doesn't get to call it a pay per view. <laughs> yeah, but like, Good thank you everybody for getting uncomfortably close for your camera on this segment. I don't know if you're on audio, or you're missing. This we part, do what you ask. You say jump, we say out. And now I'm gonna I feel look like the entire time. I feel time. like we. Sorg. I feel like we all just 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 record segments for the documentary Harmon Town, and they're Sorg. especially Riz. <laughs> Riz is like climbing onto whatever he has his webcam on at this point. <laughs> I got a confession. What is it, Bobby? When I was little, I used to think it. I used to think it was pay per view, like a paper. Wow. You I, I, them I, on I, paper. I, oh, hey, Bobby. 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 Bobby, I thought that was gonna be about Star Wars. Bobby, I was. A, I was a not dumb, the only one. I'm just. I was a dumbass out. kid. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what we learned from wrestling this week. That Bobby was a dumbass kid. Um. Good anyways. Everybody. You good night. Good night, everybody. We're done, and we'll see you guys next week for episode Man. 468. Uh, but anyways. <laughs> but but at least on the point where I I, I I know we really like, oh, that wasn't a good pay-per-view. Are we still thinking, I, and just tell me just one thing across the board here for you guys. Are we still thinking of pay-per-views or special events for WWE Network on the level? At, are we pretending that we're still paying $65 for these things? in our minds or is well, that still stuck for us i'm pretending i'm still watching them on a bad stream on the internet sometimes they it feels like well, it, we kind of are <laughs> yeah we are but we're, we're paying, paying money we're for paying the for the bad stream on the internet because i froze a couple times i had to restart yeah. my my fire imagine TV. yourself at a buffalo wild wings <laughs> here's the th- here's the thing because i kind of i kind of get what you're saying sort but mm-hmm. and while we aren't paying 65 dollars for the pay-per-view we are still paying something Yes. So, you know, you kind of have to, like, if I, I, I pay technically, technically I pay the same amount if I buy, like, then, an indie wrestling eye pay-per-view. Yeah. It, here's, here's the problem I have. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's not, I, I don't think any of you guys have done this much complaining. But I, I, I check Twitter. <laughs> and that's a very bad place to check. Mm-hmm. And, and first, guys. First mistake. <laughs> yeah. And, and the guys that are well-known well known uh by the way i did fair air quotes, quotes for the quotes. Uh, audio yes. listeners uh tweeters f- twitters for the wb or wrestling family that aren't a part of wb they were ripping apart the fact and this happened like mostly every week beside every month besides wrestlemania they always mention the fact that now because they moved to the network that the that the the entrance and everything is just raw. That's been like that for years though. Before the network, yeah, well, it has. That's the thing. It, it, and they they that. seem like it's a big deal when honestly, I'm paying nine ninety nine to see a pay per view. I don't care what they come out in. It's a WWE pay per view. Well, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so 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 so. We, if nothing else, uh, can I give you a, th- a hypothetical. Let's say if you only get a chance to watch that pay per view special event every month, do you feel like you're getting your 999s worth? Yeah. If they, if the they part, produce, yeah. um, uh, Amen. There are certain times where I don't. Yeah. Um, the closest, the only example of that would probably be like TLC this year because that was mm-hmm. just a really terrible show. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but other than, like other than that, like I, I get my money's worth off, off of the yeah. pay-per-views. Mm-hmm. The uh, way I look at Mike? it, I'm paying two dollars and fifty cents for each episode of NXT, and I get the pay-per-views for free. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> yeah, the thing. That's, that's good. That justifies in my head properly. Yeah, like yeah. two dollars and fifty cents for every episode of NXT. I'm good with that. That actually, because NXT just about always makes me feel I got my two dollars and fifty cents worth. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Uh, wait, wait, wait. It, it Bob, just, Bobby, and then back to Eamon uh, for his uh, answer. Oh, go ahead, Bobby. I'm happy with it because I didn't buy pay per views before this. I had like really no way of viewing them other than either online or going to Buffalo Wild Wings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I mean, uh, it, it's great. I love it, and I'm paying two fifty a month for um or two fifty an episode for Total Divas reruns. There we go. <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait, an episode? <laughs> that, that that math does not work out there. I, it, it, I don't. Oh. I Bobby, told you, you I was a dumbass watch... kid. I don't know math. <laughs> Bobby, you only can watch four a month then, because otherwise yeah. they're overcharging. You. And so, and and right. and you're ODing on Total Divas. Remember yeah, remember how to, I was after a month. Stop. Remember how Look I was after. Remember how I was after the month of WrestleManias. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's even worse. Amen. Yeah. I'm well, sorry. I can't wait for Total Divas. Eva Marie Redemption tour coming. I got I got an even I got an Eva Marie contact tie. <laughs> All right, Amen, Amen. Amen. What were you gonna say? I, I was just gonna, I was just gonna say. I think it, this whole thing kind of comes from a perspective of how you view wrestling. Uh, if you if you view it from a perspective of what I watched, did I get my money's worth? And if you're on the WWE Network, I would say ninety nine point nine percent of those people would say, yeah, I got my money's worth. Nine ninety nine percent. Yeah, can find that something. wasn't intentional, but okay, I'll go. With <laughs> yeah. that. Um, it, or if you view it from a, just a, a perspective of just watching, you know, the show and, and thinking whatever. But I, I, I've been critical of wrestling shows that I don't pay money for. <laughs> yes, like, you have. You Dick. know, and it's like. <laughs> all right. Well, let's let's go back to this show. Um, uh, what were the winners and losers? One, I think we can all agree across the board that tag teams were the big winners on this night. With fantastic. Yes. Yes. Amen. Every, I know. Every I know. Non extreme match was a winner. That, yeah, that's, that's the other really thing funny. too. We talked about that last night. Every 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 non extreme match was the matches we liked of the night. Uh, although some were arguing, uh, Reigns Big Show actually really really kind of stuck out. I there like that me. match. It was it was I, it was. Really I like the finish until the actual. You know. I can see I can see why people like that match, and I wouldn't you know there are people that like that style of ma- that style of match. Mm. I just found it kind of corny, but that's just because of my personal But, Eamon, Eamon, isn't that the, exactly the kind of match that we bought Extreme Rules expecting? It is, but that doesn't mean I like it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right understandable. We, I understand. Mean, we had this discussion a couple weeks ago, I think, about, like, you know, WWE's more staged kind of wrestling as opposed to more hardcore, you know, wrestling. Um, it was staged? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Bobby, Bobby it's okay. When, Bobby, when he speared into the... When he speared him through that barricade, it actually did break. Eamon, we saw we saw two guys jump into a car, <laughs> drive <laughs> off, and in at the end of the second match, come back with the other guy driving <laughs> and the and wait, one wait, of the other people in the passenger seat. I like understand that. And I, and I think I, I think the same way about that aspect of that match. I, I really I, I like Harper Ambrose. I'm not but, gonna uh, okay. I, like you guys, I, we gotta step back a moment because I think we all have to remember. Attitude era that I do like. Right. Um, I I like I I liked the the run or the car getaway spot from Extreme Rules. My thing as far as like you know staged hardcore matches and stuff like that. I don't like breakaway shit. I don't like the fact that ladders break now. Mm-hmm. I don't like that you know the the spots where like there's like they go through a stage and there's like pyro and fireworks that go off. That's the kind of stuff I don't like. Mm-hmm. I, I I you know if guys are hitting each other with chairs not even hitting them in the head or or whatever because I really don't like that but but that's the kind of stuff I'm more because to me that's more believable you know I don't know I, I like I like my favorite parts of the Harper Ambrose match weren't anything that did that had to do with the getaway mm-hmm. 
Uh-huh. My favorite part of the uh, Harper Ambrose match was Michael Cole explaining to us how parking lots work. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it goes out into the street. It goes out into the street. That's where we came oh, in. Boy. Everybody here, because we all came in through that. You came through it, Booker. You yeah. came through it, Jerry. <laughs> that's that's where they. That's where they. That they, they left. Is there still a match? Like, I, how many times? How many times last uh, Sunday night did we have uh, the commentators um, not know if they're interpreting the rules right to the match that they just oh, watched? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, the, rule, the yes. rules were broken many times. The main last event, night. the the arse thing, the the car, you know. And thank the you, Russian chain match, the Russian Whatever. chain match, the Russian the chain property. match. I, I, there was a lot of rule breaking. There's a lot of shenanigans yeah, going the on. The Russian chain match didn't start properly either. Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I'm pretty sure Naomi's boots didn't even follow the rules. <laughs> it's true. There's a lot she of role in there. The Certainly, <laughs> yes, she was. All right, uh, who was the loser? Who do you think had the worst match of the night? Uh, Big Show. Big Show. Wait, really? No, I thought oh, Big Show. No, I thought Big no. Show was good. No. Yeah. We're all defending uh, Big Show here. Wow. Yeah, I thought well, Big Show was good. I, 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 I just wanted to see that. Whoa, 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 Hold on, hold on, hold on. Riz, what was they that? Had the worst finish. I'll say they had the worst finish. Uh, okay, but. <laughs> I say the Big Show because Roman carried that match, guys. I don't mm-hmm. care how bad you feel about you know Roman Reigns, but that man, Big Show, made him look strong. But it is his job. But it was still it, he still looked very, 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 mm-hmm. very weak compared to Roman Reigns. Mike, yeah. well, wait, who was that? <laughs> So, so I, I was just I was just gonna say Big Show, you know, he he's gonna be slow. He's been wrestling yeah. forever long and he's the size he is. I thought he was much more charismatic during this mm-hmm. thing. The little notepad thing. I wasn't bored by the match, <laughs> which is what happens a lot during matches with Big Show and Kane or whatever. I wasn't bored by it. So I think that was a plus. You know I, I like was, Big Show's new gimmick of him rubbing it in our faces that he's not really <laughs> He's not. Like, honestly, that's probably the best gimmick for him at this point. <laughs> he doesn't really care. He's like, eh. well, no, he does care. He loves it, but he doesn't care if the fans hate him. Like, you can tell me a boo all you want. I've got ten more years of my contract. Stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I'm contract. not going anywhere. <laughs> he said. He said that on <laughs> at NXT out at the NXT show in Columbus. Well, isn't he? He also, like, big show he also has an iron. He, remember, he also has an ironclad contract. That's right. Yes, that's right. So it, it, that's a callback, and we yeah. we do not give the credit enough that back that that, that that happens. You know. But they they've fucked up that storyline so much oh, to, yeah. to where the point yeah, where it's a, to where a callback is like just fucking. Of course, you know. it's coincidental, right? I, I, yeah. I, I'm still. I, I'm with. I, I think this was a Vince Russo idea. I'm sorry to bring his name up this week with the controversy, <laughs> but um, that they need somebody to a script continuity person that follows that stuff yeah. because they're not doing it they're writing week to week like well let's have them do this 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 oh. well then we have them do that six, something like that six months ago that'd be completely against who would remember that it's pro wrestling you know yeah, we're all why worried why about lucha underground is so good mm-hmm. because lucha underground is like an episodic show like mm-hmm. they expect you to remember things and if you don't remember them you're going to be missing part of the story and then that's on you to or it's on the announcers to bring it back up. Right, mm-hmm. right, right, right. Um, I have I have a loser of the night. Okay, what's up, Bobby? Uh, he's a winner now, but uh, <laughs> Wade Barrett losing his match with Dan O'Brien because Dan O'Brien couldn't compete, getting put on the pre-show against Neville and losing that match. But, but he's still the Intercontinental. But he, he helped, helped Neville. No, he's still. No, he's, that he's was still a good. Match. Oh, it was a great it match. Was a great yeah. match. It was a great match. Mm-hmm. And he got and he got his revenge on Neville tonight. Of yeah. course, of course. So. All right, guys. I'm, I'm he got his payback. Oh. He set it up for it. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to say the loser was the main event. You think? The, the, main, the, main event. the main event had some problems. I thought the Russian chain match was really bad. Both yeah. from a, both no. from a part of I, I'm usually I usually love Rusev. I think this was one of Rusev's worst performances. It's a bad match. Yeah. Dude, it's a bad was, match. I hate no, that match. Was, I hate dude, the... Were... I, I, so anticlimactic to end on touching the pin, or touching the, the thing. Since, What's he's so... not, since he's not here. <laughs> sorry, sorry. What? I'm going to say this. Lunchbox isn't here. I, I can say know. something about John Cena. 
John Cena did not win that match last night or Sunday night. He didn't. He did. He oh, broke geez. Rusev's momentum, which should have nullified. All right. All, the all right, guys. All right, guys. I got a couple things, I and mean, we're going to roll out here for the big question here. Uh, but from the chat, um, Matt, of course, uh, Matt Harlins is very excited right now because <laughs> he is excited because he is the biggest Bad News Bears fan that I know. And uh, a, a Bad News Bear is going to reunite Nexus and dress them all like knights, please. Please. Oh my God, my kingdom for a he's for Squire Slater. No. <laughs> oh, no, no. My Slater. kingdom for that. He's like Podrick from Game of Thrones. Oh wow. WWE is killing gimmick matches for everyone. Last man standing uh, step is always a lame ending, ending, and then they have to get creative, and it gets weird, right? Mm-hmm. It's not yeah. a, like a last man standing should be brutal. You know, it would be creative knocking someone out. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin Owens did it. Somebody's saying, uh, a guest is saying Reigns carried Daniel Bryan a couple shows ago, too. I think that was, that's uh, Buddy. Our is buddy, that buddy, buddy Landell joining us? Okay. Buddy, Buddy. That's our Buddy, oh, Buddy. Right. And we just buddy, have buddy. just a ton of King of the Ring pictures of, ba- of Wade Barrett. It's pretty tremendous. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, please check out our friend Slice on Broadway, sliceonbroadway.com. Uh, they are supporting the show with uh, great supporting pittsburgh podcasting with great pizza uh they're here in the south hills of pittsburgh if you're in the area please check them out they're right along the tracks here in beachview carnegie pa they were re- recently pro- proclaimed uh and a proclamation from the city of pittsburgh uh slice on broadway day and all that and thank you so much those guys are so awesome they made hello kitty pizzas or at least attempted to uh but they're not afraid to do something like that um so i'm waiting for that ninja turtles pizza my next birthday uh so go check out let them know you heard about us uh, let them know you heard about them on the wrestling mayhem show uh at pgh underscore slice underscore slice on the twitters and uh, slice on broadway on facebook and instagram we'll be right back with the big question but without the birthday boy hello ladies and gentlemen this is dj lunchbox talking to you about the wrestling mayhem show i have a simple question for you you know those beds that are like uh you know, sometimes you get them in the hospital sometimes you get them at home they're like hospital beds and you can um, you can hold down a button and just kind of fold them up. You know what I mean? Like the top goes, mm-hmm. so you can watch TV, and the bottom goes, mm-hmm. so your legs feel good. But you don't stop at the comfort level. You just keep going until you're like a V shape. That's what the wrestling mayhem show is like. You listen to that, and it just kind of puts you in this V shape. But spiritually, it makes you feel real good. Like like you know this is weird and different, and you're not used to it but it somehow feels right. Check it out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com at your earliest dreams. We are back. It's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and it's time for the big question. But first, I guess we got uh, we got word from 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 out there in, in Lunchbox land. Uh, uh, Riz, you got something for us. Uh, yeah. I, I asked Lunchbox uh, what the big question is for this week. Okay. And... Just about about maybe thirty minutes later, he responded. So uh, I'm, I'm think I'm going to read this verbatim. The big question is: Why is rope? <laughs> why is rope? <laughs> because uh, it's bouncy and <laughs> it's, rope. it's rope. Why is rope? Uh. I, I think he might be drunk, <laughs> or or he's tied drugs. up somewhere, or he's tied up. Yeah, somewhere. maybe this is something. Maybe he. Well, this okay. is a call to help. Is, okay. this a, uh, is this a safety word situation? Lunchbox, if you're hearing us, blink once for yes, blink twice for no. That's not going to work, then, guys. The guys in Soviet Russia. And then, and then also message. Is, and then also message. Is why. Tell us how many times you blinked. <laughs> rope is why. Oh. Um. Um. Okay. Okay. Uh, on that note, before we get the big question, I uh, let's do this briefly. I mean, this is lunchbox appreciation tonight, since this it, is. it is the day of his exiting from uh, Lady Parts. Um, Wait. Um. <laughs> what? Wow. Uh, you guys have a really strong friendship. If you know exactly when that happens. <laughs> Right. Well, it's today. Like an accident from Mansart. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> that gets weird. So, so, real quick, before we get to the big question, I want to know your favorite DJ Lunchbox moment. Um, 
Mine would be how angry he got when he found out that Edge won the Royal Rumble. <laughs> Eamon. <laughs> he, he was working one time and Eamon spoiled it. Um, because he was having, he was actually having a pay per view party at his place. Got called into work that night during the Royal Rumble and got home. Was going to watch it on delay or recording or something like that. And then Eamon tweeted him, "Never let me live it down." Nope, 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 nope. nope. <laughs> Who else um, has one? Who has one? Eamon. Uh, my my favorite is uh, Monkey Rodeo Night. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Lovecraft just screaming in excitement because he was going to something called oh Monkey Rodeo Night, it where a, a monkey was driving a dog. Yes, yep. yes, and it was the halftime show for the Pittsburgh Power Football Arena Football <laughs> Game, which Pittsburgh Power is no longer here anymore. Unfortunately, three seasons. Damn it. Yeah. Yes. Um, mine was uh, two or th- every, all the holiday episodes we did. <laughs> like, so oh, what? You get molested constantly. <laughs> yeah, that. And him force feeding me the uh, wine labels, except for his new, except for the wine that he got specially made for himself. <laughs> Petri wine. Petri wine. The family that took time to bring you good wine. That one. What about you, Bobby? I will tell you. Oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> will, no. Will not do that voice. When, he started doing that in the car the other night. I'm like, you stop that. <laughs> You stop when, that, Will. When he read the 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 uh, wrestling federation flyer, <laughs> what? You remember what? that when when the the guy that wrote the, the I remember that one. The, the oh, I do remember that flyer now. with the number, and then he, we called it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was hilarious. Oh. Also, and this is honorable mention, but all the calls to make mentions, <laughs> all of them. Just uh, Sword. We, we need to re-release those Sword, again. Sword. What's your favorite? Uh, what is my your favorite moment possible? was the time that we were talking about wrestling at a party, and we were drinking, and I said, hey, man, we should do this as a podcast, something called a podcast. <laughs> Lunchbox origin story. <laughs> I, and I owe Sorg. Also, I owe our internet on also, radio. Those By the several... way, uh, Sorg, we had a question in the chat room. Okay. Um, and and I, I fielded it because I knew the answer to this one. Um, I be- We believe that's funny. He he asked, "Has anyone ever seen Lunchbox, Lunchbox and Sawtooth in the same place at the same time?" I told him I had. They were playing air hockey with two gerbils and an old can of spam. Uh, buddy uh, asked me who won, and I said the gerbils because uh, just, that was how it ended. Just uh, just going to point this out there: Lunchbox is not supposed to be in the same room as Sawtooth because. Lunchbox owes him money. <laughs> yeah, he just he pointing that out there. The air hockey. Training order. Sawtooth he, Willie, go the go to SorgatronMedia.com. Check out Sawtooth Willie to find. And he's going to so, Tough Enough. We have our. I wanted everybody to send Tough Enough entries. I still have to shoot mine. But if you have a Tough Enough entry that you did, Mayhem Nation, send it in. We'd like to see it. We'll share it around the crew. We'll definitely critique it. Um, and, um, yeah. Garza, Garza and Matt both have the same favorite healthy moment. <laughs> Yes, I saw this. The uh, lunchbox Green moment, the debut of the Russian Pipis C. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, sent yes. from my iPad. iPhone. <laughs> Mad Mike, what's the big question of the week, good sir? Alrighty. Since LB is off celebrating birthdays and rope, um, I have come up with a very important question, the big question, if you will, about the WWE Network. Now, we had the King of the Ring tonight. We have Renee Young's little 10-minute bit. We have Jerry Springer. We have the podcast. If you could pick any wrestler, past or present, to host a 15-minute segment on the network, you don't get to control what they do, but you know that they're hosting it. Who would it be? Uh, easy. Iron Sheik. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're doing TVMA stuff. It's not outside the realm. Okay. I am going to say Bobby Heenan. True, true. I accept he. I mean, Bobby Heenan well, now because it's not going to work. Yeah. No, but past, past or present. Okay. Past or present. Okay, I got you. No, 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 completely. Just let him yeah, go. Yeah, because they can just put on the Bobby Heenan show, and I will be okay with that. Exactly. Exactly. Riz, you got one. Andre the Giant. <laughs> the ghost of Andre the Giant. <laughs> the Bobby. I know. I'm the scared. Andre the Giant show. <laughs> Just interviewing the guy from Game of Thrones. Is every question, is every question would you like a peanut? 
and asking about Mini Driver. Oh, no. Actually, Andre is Giant interviewing Hodor might be my favorite thing. <laughs> uh, guys, check check out the, the Andre the Giant show on, yes. on YouTube. It's pretty freaking. It is pretty tremendous. Uh, what about you, Eamon? Um, if NXT counts as well, uh, I will say Enzo Amore. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, that's good. That's good. Him, about, and, him and Enzo good. cast, like, redoing um, whatever Morrison and Miz used to do. Like, that kind of style of oh, the dirt sheet would be amazing. Yeah, the dirt sheet. Wow, that would be amazing. That would be good. That was, like, that was, that was like some of the best. That is the, the, the pinnacle of what came from YouTube. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? So, awesome. Bobby? Uh, Todd Pettengill. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, um, actually, he did do the soup. Did he? Wait, was it him? I don't yeah, think it was him. no, it's somebody that looked like him. I don't know, John Henson. Um, uh, Chad Penn. You know? because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't think of anybody. I forgot, yeah. the, I forgot the original. Yeah. Oh, Roddy Piper. Roddy Piper. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. Yeah. That's who I was thinking of earlier. I think they'll get them since they're doing all these podcast things. So. Piper's Pit. Yeah. Let us know what you think. And we were talking about it a little bit earlier tonight, but if you let us know uh, on Twitter, hashtag WMS Big Question, um, you will get a copy of Super Indie 13 from last year. That includes like RJ City, Dalton Castle's a part of that show, Facade, a friend of the show who we released a video. Oh, did you guys see that we did a video last week of friend of the show Facade visiting Toonzeum for the Ninja Turtles exhibit. Great fun we had down there uh, doing that. But uh, you can check out the Super Indie trailer trailer over on IWC Pro Wrestling, uh, the YouTube channel. What? And uh, that well, yeah, find Riz in the crowd exactly. Uh, but uh, so many. I think I'm in the same spot in all of these. Chris Saban in there. Spoiler: He showed up on Ring of Honor this week. Uh, t- uh, uh, that was awesome. Yeah, some that other was cool. Ring of Honor representation as well. Uh, some some great talent. So you'll get that free if you respond to us with the WMS big question. Now, some people from last week who will be getting a copy of uh, RWA Spring Fling 2015 with that fan strap match we were discussing earlier, <laughs> including Trevor Oz. Oz, Oz, I can't remember how he was on the show a while ago. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Headlocks for Breakfast was his site when we were talking to him. Uh, he says honestly. Uh, well, the question for last week was um uh what was it it was it was uh do you want indie wrestlers or just general new talent to be submitting for tough enough uh trevor says honestly all of them if you don't then then you're wasting an opportunity and not taking their career seriously as far as uh those guys go and we we got a, a good bit of discussion actually a little bit going on here let me double check i know we had a few on twitter as well um but uh thank you everybody for joining in there uh, and uh, I don't know. Have you guys been entertained by the Tough Enough entries so far that have been popping up? I know a lot of friends of the show. Darren De Niro, I, Dylan Bostic, um, uh, so far. Uh, Jimmy Nuts. Nuts has one mm-hmm. that he submitted. This was really good. I'm surprised, uh, first of all, uh, another, I think, yeah, a friend of the show, uh, J-Rock's doing it, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Which, I saw him submit one. Yeah, he submitted one. Uh, but... Uh, I'm I'm surprised that they're letting the people who are going to be disqualified on there. Yeah, they they were showing the uh, the vertical video, right? <laughs> yeah, even Michael Cole was like, "Look, this is how you you're supposed to film it. You're, this is how you're supposed to do it." And, and he's he taking a, he's taking the photo of uh, JBL's crotch, Michael, <laughs> and it's just to the point where it's like, okay, whatever. And then he told us how parking lots work again. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, most of these I I do like, uh, but it's just do it horizontal like normal people. I haven't really watched any of them. I don't care to mm-hmm. for the most part. I, I I trust WWE enough to show me the funniest ones or the most serious ones in their packages. <laughs> Keith Apicary did one. What? <laughs> Keith Apicary did yeah, one. Yeah, he. <laughs> oh, what's that? What it's had YouTube Dolph Ziggler in it. Yeah. Oh, I saw a picture of that one. I wanted yeah. to watch that one. Although so I saw that uh, Zack Ryder's buggy buddy, the Big O, set one. Nice. Again? You should. Yeah. Good. Yeah. He was on uh, CNN. Gut check. Yeah, he, he was on. He was on. Mm-hmm. 
All right. On that note, uh, first, hey, go to, go check out ProWrestlingTees.com. Uh, support the show. Support indie wrestlers uh, starting at ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. I'm not even going to pull up the site because I'm wearing Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show.com. There it is. I'm wearing it. I'm wearing it. I still have to get another uh, Property of Mayhem shirt since I gave mine away. I think it was a birthday present for Will last year. So. No, no, it was it wasn't a birthday present. He just took it from the. Well, I let him have it for a show we were doing. I'm like, man, keep it. It's like your birthday or something coming up for Christmas, maybe. I don't know. So uh, yeah, I, I still have to replenish my supply. So uh, there'll be at least one more sale coming up there. But yeah. check out other friends like hey, Chris Sabin's on there. DJ Z Zima Ion is on there. A lot of rep- raw representation of Mayhem friends and so much more. Gregory Irons, Zach Gowan, um, a lot of representation is the place to pick up stuff and support indie wrestling by putting clothes on your back so go check it out pro wrestling tees.com slash wms so we have what's next mike are we talking no no we're not doing that we're not doing that we're gonna do we're going to fan mail and see where it goes so we have some fan mails <laughs> holy crap we have some fan mail i'm gonna start with the shorter one tonight uh mayhem crew zero writes us no heel Garza tonight. Just wanted to email to give credit to the member to to and remember Vern Gagne. Wrestling mm-hmm. as we know it today was thanks to Vern Gagne. He trained t- lots and lots of people, uh, including guys from the Iron Sheik to the Four Horsemen. Gagne was behind Flair and the Andersons. Gagne trained and was one of the first to give Steamboat a chance. Now let's get in, go into the AWA, where it's a throwback episode. Uh, WWE wouldn't be what it is and was if the McMahons hadn't used AWA as their talent pool. This is true. Of yeah. course, Ganya didn't like it, but pretty much everyone that Vince used to build the WWF came from Ganya's boys. Uh, we used to joke that Vince was going to steal Vern's janitor. <laughs> Nice. Uh, This man deserves the greatest of praises in any wrestling-related medium. Uh, Vern Gagne, we appreciate what you did for wrestling, and you will be remembered. Zero out. Um, uh, On the end of that, uh, I'm presuming an unmarked PS. Extreme Rules (laughs) sucked. Hashtag Heel Garza. Hashtag Swerve. No, no, this was a very significant passing with Vern Gagne. He was, uh, you know, a very significant uh, piece of, of history with pro wrestling. Yeah, they, they did a video package uh, for him in between the King of the Ring matches. Good, 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 good. Because good. it didn't it happened too quickly for them to do it on Raw, I think. So they threw it into the King of the Rings. Stuff. I feel like it I did it like it. right probably the last hour of Raw it started to break. Hmm. That's that's a shame. That's a shame. Mm-hmm. Um well, you know if nothing else they can just put the AWA special up, you know, on yeah. the on the stream at some point. So uh, we got another one from, hey, remember Dustin? Yeah! No. Remember, like, half of our show would be answering his questions? Well, I hope our guest is waiting on the Indie Mayhem show, so. <laughs> Dear Mayhem Nation, it's me, it's me. No, I am not big PVC, PVC from Russia. PVC? What is that PVC? about? PVC? Uh, or what in the hell ever that guy's name was. <laughs> It's the guy that gives you the gift of rhyme like WWE gives out races gimmicks like crime time. A new day is beheld for us. Uh, the true wrestling is Mark. And if my truth offends you, you can contact my lawyer, Joseph Park. Superb with my syllables, like I had both Enzo's mic skills and animal print. I am that guy who has more fans than Virgil, a.k.a. Vincent. Wow. A factually, like rhyming gimmick. factually correct with my content, and as obscure as Scott St- as a Scott Steiner promo, I'm doing my best Pritchard to return and say I love you. Oh. I love uh, you. I did no that wrong. Homo. That's me. No homo. Oh. Wow. But ultimately... Because no, he rhymed it with promo. I, I, he, he was trying. He was trying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 you got to connect them. I, I, I get it now. Uh, but ultimately, my return will be as short-lived as the Rock on Raw because I'm harder to master than a Rubik's figure out that jigsaw. Oh, God. So let's play wow. a game. Wait, what? I'm, I, I, okay, Rubik's, okay. Rubik's, 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 Rubik's and jigsaw are the same. I need to practice these in the mirror before I do them on the show. So let's play a game. But unlike Bray, my words aren't subliminal. In the end of this, I'll be newjacking your minds because what I do is criminal. 
I got it. <laughs> I have I, I, I no love your, brain cells. Dustin, Dustin, I really love your attempts. Um, you, you need to understand, like, um, like five seven five or like the like so like the use of syllables. So, so you just ask <laughs> no, to do a haiku. If you're if you're reading it along with sword, it definitely makes sense. But you need to separate it. Mm. Separate it. Yeah, give me lines. Oh, give me something. Yeah, keep them separated. That's Anyways, you're hey, welcome. Questions. questions. Number one, during last week's Raw, Mike made a comment. Mike, I'm going to put the camera on you while I read this. Hi. <laughs> you made a comment about Impact not pretending that they are live. While I admit this is annoying at times, I ask if uh, that really is a bad thing. When Impact treated tape shows as live events, remember, hashtag Impact Live, I recall the same complaint, but in the opposite direction, Mike. If uh, they are having to do these pre these uh, tape shows, which would you prefer, treat it like a live event, or be honest that it's taped? Pick one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Pick one and stick with it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's true. no. I, honestly, I would pretend because pretending that it's live also means that when you have previews for next week, you do not show me clips from next week. Right, that that is my like because they spoil shit all the time, all right. the time. Right. Um, it's just just pick one. Treat this like an episodic television show, like The Flash, say where you see a preview, or don't. Or, I, or I'm like Lucha Underground. Right. Which, right. I, I, I think people Please. with the wrong minds doing those other programs coming over and doing this and they're not jiving. You know what I mean? But thank God thank God we have someone from Smashing Pumpkins to make it all better. Oh Jesus. Please. Yeah. Please. God. Please. God. Did you hear about his crazy ideas on the Mayhem Minute this morning? Yeah. Yes. No. Um What is this, nineteen seventy nine? No, it's tonight tonight, Bobby. Question yeah. two, fuck it off. Lucha no, Underground is right. not amazing. They have been consistently they have been consistently been putting out solid content since its inception, but this addition of a unique dynamic like the trios title is a great vehicle for character development. My question though. Do you think they need another singles title for the mid card? Personally, I think two titles is a nice fit, but I wanted your take on this. Um, not having been watching it, I feel um, it seems like that they're fighting on uh, over things other than titles, from yeah. what I'm perceiving here, and it's an hour show. Much to the same reason, I don't think there should be an, yet another title on NXT. Briefcase is full of money. Well, yeah. they mm -hmm. all they already have two singles titles technically. They have featured the AAA title. And they featured the Lucha Underground title. Okay. So I think in that respect, you already have, like, you have enough where you can have a week without any championships, and they still have solid storylines pushing through. But they can also have a whole feud for the AAA title while kind of ignoring the Lucha Underground title at the same time, which they've done. And, and it's just a case of the format in which Lucha Underground is in where you don't have wrestlers just filling spots. Mm -hmm. and, and and the fact that everyone there has a purpose, so there's really no need for a secondary title unless the secondary title is part of an actual story. Right. See, I, I think it's different for NXT because sometimes you will just get NXT shows where it's just guys having matches for no reason. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think like an internet title would be great <laughs> on NXT. But Zach, from, Zach Ryder has that. From, yep. a tie, from a tight from 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 the the chat room, uh, one I love the blue chan, blue pants uh, image there. Uh, Triple A title doesn't count from uh, Garza. Uh, Matt, Main Street Matt says one singles title is enough. Lucha Underground is perfect in nearly every way. Um, and, uh, and, and I'd say the yeah, the Triple yeah. A title does count since it's been defended on their show. Okay. Yeah, but Garza is not there. That's his opinion. That's his opinion. A, I know what he means, but still. It's something they can call upon because they happen to have the AAA champion on their show. Mm -hmm. They have a working relationship. There's nothing wrong with it. No, no, of course. Uh, so back to the question. Uh, number three, finally, when I hear people complain about WWE, one of those things that they often bring up is when they say uh, they want a viable alternative. Personally, this is a moronically stupid concept to me because there is now a plethora of viable alternatives out there. TNA, Lucha, ROH, New Japan, local indies, but people are too lazy to actually seek them out or too cheap to purchase a DVD, something I will be doing with Evolve 41. Am I off base 
in considering that a everyone's taste is different so there will never be the one specific alternative and b there's more consumable wrestling content now than a decade ago means that yeah. the idea of a singular viable alternative is ridiculous they want the next wwe that everybody else is going to follow along on they, they... I, I think i think there is a change not not viable alternative but there's a difference between viable alternative and competition Mm-hmm. And I think people want a compet. I think if you're looking for somebody that wants something out of one specific group, they want a competitor for WWE. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Um, they need they, they be a viable competitor. Like, like Dustin's trying to point out here, you need the name brand. You need a name to back it. Like, say WWE and USA Network. Everybody has WWE and the USA Network. Everybody has. Uh, well, most people have sci-fi, uh, but th- there's still that because I, who has lucha? Who has right, lucha right, right. It's, it's kind of hard I to don't. acquire. Who has ROH? I do. I do. I don't. Okay. Who has who has Destination America with TNA? I wish I didn't. I do. I wish I didn't. So I, see that that thing is, those are on other stations that. Most people may not get. Mm-hmm. We need the, the, there needs to be one that's where most people get it. You need something that's easily accessible. Mm-hmm. I do I do agree though with Garza of, or not Garza um uh, Dustin uh, about the fact that there are alternatives and if you do mm-hmm. there is a lot of wrestling if you look for and, it. and if you look for it you can you can find most, something. Most people. Most wrestling fans don't look for it, and, and but that's his question. They want it. They want it on that TV. Yep. They don't want to look for it on YouTube or on uh, Pittsburgh Wrestling. Like, that's why I don't yeah. want to roll away to shit on Pittsburgh Wrestling. Yeah. Hey, 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 wait. What, or thanks or for Andy the wrestling. Plug? US, well, both I, I, I disagree with that. I really okay. disagree with that. Really? Well, that's because you're young, Ian. yeah. Damon, that's I've, because you're young, and actually, you happen no, to be working for an independent wrestling promotion. Actually, no, I don't, no, 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 no. I, no that has most, pe- most young people, and most of the young people who <laughs> WWE attracts, yeah, aren't going to go to YouTube and search. It's the it's it's, or, it's the common or, denominator or, issue, and it's okay. A, but but this isn't the audience we're targeting. We're not targeting young kids when people no. are talking about looking for the alternative. We're talking about twenty something year old wrestling fans. Right. Mm-hmm. Are we? Are, are we? we really? No, no, no. no. The demographic yeah. is eighteen to thirty five. No, I don't think so. What Dustin? No, what Dustin is talking about is people that watch Raw. Uh, you know, actively watch Raw and don't enjoy it and want the alternative. That's not the younger audience. And, That's and, not. I, I think, and I also think the people that think that think back to, I want the WCW want on the, the other FC. channel I can flip to. Yeah. Do you want to know the only reason I started watching ECW? Hmm. I was able to find it very easily on my TV. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Very easily. Like, honestly, if I would watch Ring of Honor if it was on my television. Right. It's it, not. Even for me, oh, it's I, like... I don't want to sit in front of my computer and right. watch a two-hour Ring of Honor show. Right. I understand that, but there hour. was also an era where trade tape... Ta- ta- not trade taping. Trade tape. Tape trading <laughs> was was more popular. And I'm not saying we're... I'm not saying the alternative is going to reach a mass amount of people who, you know... The the amount of people that is not going to significantly take away but from WWE's audience. That's what Dustin's trying to get. He's trying to make sure make us, you know... He wants us to know that there are alternatives out there, but he's also saying that one of the that these alternatives are going to push WWE into a oh my god we have to do something or else. I don't think he's saying that. Anyways, either way, either way, either way, he is so happy that we're arguing over this from the chat room. Arguing about this. What was was, was so? It was a good discussion, though. Uh, You mentioned DVDs and stuff. I don't think people are going to spend money on wrestling shows that they are not familiar with. Exactly. They need to be. They need to be introduced to them. Well, independent wrestling's fucked then. Yeah. (laughs) Well, no, but I'm just. No, no, no. They're they're not buying DVDs. No way. They're, They're not buying DVDs. I, okay. Any any promotion that I talk to or hear about is like, oh, DVDs are on the way out, so we're doing this thing, you know. Uh, but they're doing digital. 
They're doing digital. Smart Mark doesn't even take new DVDs half the time unless they're producing them, probably, right? Um, they, they don't from us, and 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 I think that's it. Just like we're all on WWE Network. Yes, there are some people now. Now, I mean, okay, the the the, the alternative is. Uh, you know, we go to Meadville and, and Clearfield. We sell DVDs. I'm still getting DVD orders from Meadville, right? A pretty consistent ones too. Uh, versus any other show we do here in the Pittsburgh area, I get those digital downloads, and uh-huh. I'm still getting digital downloads from people not in the area, in other countries, right? Mm-hmm. And I think I think that's still a more convenient thing for the people. But I th- I think I, my interpretation of this question and the thing for a viable alternative again is that can I? flip the station and it's and and i find the mm-hmm. thing it's not on the upper cables like like uh, destination america and lucha underground l ray network it's not on a dvd i don't have to go look through my roku box roku box pwx local company uh is on an internet do, do you know there's an independent wrestling channel on roku <laughs> I don't have a, I don't have a, a newer Roku to check this out myself, but you know that is an alternative. It's a true alternative. Any of these are a true alternative, but it's not the viable alternatives as an actual competition. As in, I can flip over to Spike TV and watch some wrestling. No, I agree. That, I that's agree. as supported and on the level. That that's what they want is a viable huh. on the level of WWE, but not WWE. That's that's bringing them NXT is the only viable alternative to WWE right now. And that's owned by WWE, by the mm-hmm. way. Yeah. I, I think the, the what Dustin's asking, I think people, we're looking at it from sort of two different perspectives. I'm not right, looking right. at it from a company of perspective. Yeah. I'm looking at it from a fan perspective. And is there opportunities for fans that but are fed up there with is. what they get on right. Raw? We're looking at it from your fan perspective. Yeah, uh, you're, not, you're not taking in the people. Because, again, again, some of these from 18 to whatever – 40 something year, years old. Mm-hmm. I believe that's the uh, age group that we're talking about. 18 to 35. Yeah. 18 plus, to 35. Some people, some people well, don't even know what they're looking for. 35 to corpse. Riz, you're saying? Sorry, Riz. Uh, the, the people who, like, we know what's out there because mm-hmm. we do a podcast. We have, we, we do no. a lot of podcasts featuring Lucha and ROH, well, maybe not ROH, but more in indie wrestling. We do all that. We know that there's that stuff out there, and that's what we look for. But some of these guys, even if they're just, you know, your average fan, don't. And they just check out WWE or try to check out TNA or try to check out ROH and just go back to WWE because that's their, that's their go-to place. I I feel like that those kind of people are people that uh, we're talking about people that are focused directly on TV that flip through a channel and see WWE. That's the, and, and the other thing if is those a, people if those people get fed up with WWE or whatever they're just not going to watch wrestling right. because that's not right. you know it's not that's, that's that's the generic fan. And, and that's what I'm saying and, and also the fans cuz I mean uh, there's, there's, no there's a lot of there are a lot of other. rural fans to wrestling like I was when I didn't have cable as we talked about earlier right there's and, a, and right and now the, turn- and right now the equivalent of that everybody buying a DVD in Meadville in the middle of nowhere in Clearfield they don't have the internet to do WWE network mm-hmm. it's not well, an what? option it is straight up just not an option for them so they're sitting there and say well i don't get what i get out of monday night raw and it and they're putting all the stuff here and i can't even pay my 65 dollars to watch a pay-per-view and maybe i'm fed up with that what is the alternative the real alternative and it was mentioned kind of passingly that that triple a new japan pro wrestling is the real alternative or where that will come from but hey that is the thing you can get on pay-per-view ring of honor is a thing that occasionally you can get on pay-per-view and yes those guys are going to Fastly become the minority as more and more people are able to get WWE Network, and they will eventually get their internet. Just like eventually we have satellite dishes for all of us that didn't have cable back in 1996. Um, you know that that's your divide. That's your you know that's where those people can't. You know they need something on a main channel. Like there is no well, other option. Is, is that audience that kind of audience? Mm-hmm. Their alternative isn't. Even wrestling, their, right. their alternative would yeah. be some other television program. Right, right, and that's the problem: is all these wrestling alternatives are all competing with everything else. Yeah, um, the uh, the there's, a discussion, there's a discussion. There's a discussion. There's a discussion with uh, I, I attended a social media guy for uh, the Met in New York, Mike, um, and he says our competition is not other museums; it's life. 
these yeah. days. And that's oh, yeah. the same thing with these wrestling groups. All right, I want to move on here. Dustin does complete his email. <laughs> and I know you guys. I know you guys have so many more ideas on this. I would love to carry this. Let's carry this over uh, to Facebook group because um, I, I know I know you guys are gonna have a lot of discussions. Well, I on just this. get irrationally angry. I'm I'm just gonna <laughs> caps lock everything. Caps so lock <laughs> you. <laughs> you don't I'm understand the real wrestling fans. Like, it, I'm just gonna, I'm, awesome. And then Eamon like, I'm comes just back. Bash keys. Eamon comes back and lets us know that he was the original wrestle fan and all yes, that. Yes, indeed. Dustin. Accurately responds to all of this. Ha <laughs> ha! Words and lots of them. Hopefully, this will inspire another hour-long rant, di- rant, diatribe, and discussion oh, from the members of the panel. Perhaps last buzz. week. Yeah. Perhaps last week, the idea of Sorg supporting Taz on the Mayhem Minute would have inspired such a talking point. But no, the panel should be fired for not listening to that. Ah. Yeah, fired. Uh, but uh yeah there's that too <laughs> seriously my, guys one cent? seriously guys support your mayhem nation in all forms including both revenue and time at this point i am just rambling to buy time in order to make my return deflated by the fact that i just won't shut the hell up this has been my the one and only dust and ps lunchbox's catchphrase should simply be ah reaction he had when his cd tray tried to attack him good (laughs) shit lb damn that michael hayes that is your fan mail for this week mike do you have anything to say about impact wrestling sore do i please make it quick quick please Uh, you did sign I did not sigh. You went, yes. uh, uh, I, no, that's not a sigh. I'll qualify. That's not a sigh. Right, Mike, Mike, like Mike get to the point. Oh, you I'm like going to you guys if you don't let me say what I have to say. Anyway. Lightning round. All right. Um, so a night of knockouts was neither a night of knockouts nor knockout. Like I said last night, technically TKO, it was uh, night of knockouts. Technically knockouts. Technically yeah. knockouts. Yeah, that's not true, though. Um. The Night of Knockouts just happened to have three matches, including Knockouts, on it. Um, the Dollhouse, uh, I thought they were going to be something other than WeAre18.com. They are not. Do uh, not go to WeAre18.com. Do, do go to it if you're bored. Um, no. Do not Google. go to it at work. Do not are, go at work. What was it again? WeAre18. <laughs> just stop it, stop it, stop. Xbox, we are 18.com. <laughs> oh, God! Hey, Siri, we are 18.com. <laughs> okay, Google, we are 18.com. Hey, I'm covering Google. all the bases. What is rope? <laughs> Why is rope? Why is rope? <laughs> Why is rope? <laughs> right. Mike, Mike, um, back to your point. Yes, back to Impact. Um, But yeah, they, uh, me and Yim wrestled Cherry Bomb, which, Bobby, if you're interested in such things, you might want to watch it. Um. Then DM and Marty Bell shared a jawbreaker, and uh, their whole gimmick is that they will attack someone and put a jawbreaker in their mouth. I guess someone on the creative team just saw the uh, the 1998 movie Jawbreaker and okay. said, hey, that's new and topical. Um, Vince McMahon. <laughs> oh, Vince McMahon. Finally got around to watching American History X <laughs> and Jawbreaker. <laughs> that's why they banned the group. Bobby. That's right, that's um, right. But, uh, yeah, then we also had, we were supposed to have Kurt Angle versus Eric Young for the world title and false advertising because Austin Aries cashes briefcase in for no reason. Then there was no match. Eric Young attacked Kurt Angle, so what do you do for that? Uh, apparently, Hardcore Justice is next week. We have one match maybe announced for it. Hell yeah. Hardcore Justice. Other, other than that, there's really nothing going on with it. Uh, the Dollhouse immediately turned heel and joined up with uh, Taryn Terrell. So that was one thing that, that Eamon spoiled for me a while back. So, Oh, and by the way, that wasn't even the main event of the show. Like, it was promised to be last week. Um, but the one good thing that did happen on Impact is it finally looks like they're going to be pushing EC3 for world champion status. And I'm hopeful that they have a live show on May 8th. Um, I'm going to give Impact a month after this live show. If they have not seriously turned it around to the point where I can watch it without just hating myself, um, I'm going to stop watching. Because 
it's it's just awful. At this so so and not I don't think any any kind of ballad from Smashing Pumpkins is going to help. <laughs> not, not not to predict not to predict things too early uh, or count your chickens or whatever, but uh, fans of the Rusty Mayhem show enjoy the Impact uh, Death Watch uh, for the next month. <laughs> but yeah, oh, there you go. We'll see. We'll see. I can justify watching a lot of things, Eamon. We do a podcast on Total Divas for Christ's sake. So I also want to point out that we uh, we that, don't that uh, Hardcore we, Justice is a subsection of WeAre18.com. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Wow. Oh, Amen. Amen. Wow. Amen. Points. Bringing, bringing, bringing that's, the, points. Uh, that's a good one. Bringing the, the funny. And, um, and Matt Carlin's asking in the chat room, when is ROH Watch? When it comes on in New York City. I'll <laughs> do ROH Watch. Yeah, 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 that's probably yeah, it. We, we right, can do ROH Watch. Can do it now. We could do ROH it. was awesome. You know, you know I, I might be willing to get in on uh, uh, ROH Watch. Um, yeah, we can do it too. I, I watched it this week, but uh, we, but we also have been battling with actually talking about we'll it on about Indie it. Mayhem Show too. <laughs> since and now, our, and now our watch begins of and, honor. There you go. Uh, well, okay. Uh, Ring of Honor watch. Uh, I watched it this week, and uh, you Me should too. too. It is up. I, and the great thing is, if you hear about Ring of Honor on this show, if we decide to do it uh, this show every week, um, by Thursday, you can go watch it on Ring of Honor Wrestling. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, this week was the big thing. Well, they had a, a four way, uh, which was pretty good. Can't remember mm-hmm. everybody was in it. BJ Moose. Whitmer um, was in there. Uh, Moose, Moose yeah. was in it. I love yeah, Moose. Moose was in it. Um, um, and, some guy with green pants. Some guy with green pants. Yes, that's unfortunately what it breaks down to with ROH yeah. sometimes when I haven't watched for a while. Was his name uh, Green Pants? No, no. no um, the one dude from the decade. Uh, can't remember his name. PJ Whitmer. PJ Whitmer, and um, Caprice Coleman. Caprice Coleman, yeah. I was at this show. That's good. I was at this show, so, was was good. Good. This show, so I kind of. That's but, true. Eamon was there. <laughs> Who's the green pants guy, Eamon? Uh, I believe it's Will Ferrara. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's there's right. a Ferrara. Yeah. Right. Wow. Yeah, because there's a there's a there's somebody else who goes by something Ferrara. Um, um, yeah, here in the Nick area Ferrara? as well. No, no, yeah. no, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, but uh, the big thing was the title match, the title change, of course, with uh, yeah. the addiction taking it from Fish and and O'Reilly, which dirty, was pretty dirty cheaters. tremendous with a uh, surprise. I guess we can spoil it, right, Bobby? I mean, it's out there. Yeah, it's uh, out but there. But Chris Saban popping up under the yeah. under the red mask. Uh, so I, I haven't been regularly. I seem to miss every week the Dalton Castles on. <laughs> for instance which has been amazing yeah i know i know why well, hey i got to see it in person at Super iwc's last practice. show so yeah we, was... we've seen <laughs> if i hear truth martini talk talk to me about <laughs> super beta prostate one more time i'm gonna buy some super beta prostate i'm pegging some friends of the show um to come back that are currently on ring of honor um let's see if that's not a problem and we're gonna ask about those ads <laughs> nice i saw i i sent uh the adam cole local commercial to uh, we watch wrestling podcast. I got a fa- two favorites out of it. Nice, so. nice, <laughs> nice. So uh, Ring of Honor, you should be watching it if it is on your area, or at least every Thursday. But they put a, the latest episode up on uh, Ring of Honor's website. Uh, you should. You really just should. It, it, it's is, worth are the watching. episodes on the really? website just for members? No, no, no. The, the, no huh? the I think okay. if you're a member, you get it sooner. Yeah. Gotcha. On top of everything else, you have to at least be a paying member at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, but generally, you can just watch it every Thursday. So, it's I mean, and everything's um, taped. Like everything's like everything was taped like a month ago, anyways. So you know, it's kind of the TNA problem there. But they don't really pretend. You know, they don't pretend. Uh, you there know. was a, there was a good segment with ACH and um, Adam Page too. There was. There was. Yeah. There was a great speech by ACH, uh, Amen's buddy there. Uh, so, uh, no, good stuff. Good stuff. Go definitely watch it. Guys, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Real quick. Riz. Oh, boy. Riz. I-, I learned that uh, we have a very special, special birthday. And I wish he was here so I can say it to his face. Happy birthday, <laughs> Alex Riley. <laughs> <laughs> as, soon, as soon as you said say to yeah. his face, or as you blew your game like this, I don't yeah. care. Why? Jeez, I'm That's just trying whole, to make the whole rage. point. That was I'm the whole trying point. to make your rage. What about you, Eamon? Oh God damn it! I I had mine and I forgot. Well, you might. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh I know. I know. Um, uh, Damien Sandow has jumped the shark. Yes, he has. Oh, yes, he has. Unfortunately. He's What's that was next? one of the most. I tweeted at him today. That, that was one of the most disappointing things I ever have ever seen last night. I ever? tweeted at him today. Ever. It's up there. 
it's up there. Ever. It, it's like, it, you, it, there was so much that could have happened from this thing. And now he's just a five-year-old that mocks did you, you see, and repeats everything did, you say. Did, did you see the Fallout episode, or the Fallout YouTube I heard he does it to Renee Young. He did it to Renee. Oh, yeah, you I do not like, oh. do that to Renee Young. Well, you, man, Mike. Um, I. Do you guys feel a draft in here? What? Um, we're we're not in the I, we're not in the same room. No, I. I <laughs> how <laughs> the internet drafts. <laughs> Somebody said a draft email. Yes, I let you do your fucking bit. All right. <laughs> No, my thing didn't say, hey, guys, do you feel that? <laughs> I'm going to catch an internet virus. It's so cool. Chris, here. Chris, did, did you watch NXT? Yeah. I'm doing the Kevin Owens. I learned Kevin Owens is good at promos. Shut the fuck up, Riz. <laughs> oh, and also, Jeff Hardy broke his leg because he can't travel to China. Because fuck TNA. They put a tag team champion on a guy who can't leave the fucking state of Florida. Jeez. Oh, jeez. How about you, Bobby? Um, I learned how parking lots work this week. Thank you, Michael Cole. Thank you, Michael Cole. And I also learned that uh, Cody Rhodes. I watched. Let me set this up. I watched the countdown episode of all the Intercontinental Champions, mm -hmm. and then I watched the one uh, with uh, the mysterious superstars. Yes. Cody Rhodes was on both of those countdowns. Of course he was. And they showed when he was dashing Cody Rhodes and then became disfigured Cody Rhodes, and it was one of the best times of his career. I wish they would I, – I love Stardust too, but it just goes to show you how good Cody Rhodes is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Cody Rhodes has turned everything they've given them. Mm -hmm. I learned that the reason they didn't overturn the um, table uh, when Brock Lesnar destroyed the announce team was to sell – from Extreme Rules, how heavy that table is. Now, mm -hmm. there's, there's, uh, now that's what I learned. Man, now, cool. we have so many freaking responses for what you people learned in wrestling on, on Facebook right now. Um, let's see if we can pull it up. Steve says he learned that Mania Law will be blamed on Rollins being the champ and not the creative team being uh, able to roll with momentum. Then the belt will be on Reigns soon, and that will fix everything. Right? Uh, Daniel learned that Ziggler will never catch a break. Uh, Garza learned that uh, Randy Orton girl is hot, and you can't teach that. That would be I the find that. Well, yes, there there was a vine. <laughs> oh, of the that. one that's just dancing. Yeah. Yes, there she is going. She um. Is. Anyways, I learned that Daniel Bryan needs to retire before he becomes paralyzed from Gabriel. He also learned mm -hmm. that Cena is the WWE Golden Shovel to bury talent. Alex also learned that uh, soon indie wrestling companies everywhere will be hosting tough enough style competitions to find people they can train. Don't believe me? Ask Chikara. They're basically doing that on May 23rd. Link to follow soon. And here's the link. Um, <laughs> uh, Garza, they, they should do it in reverse. Like Indie companies should have a tough enough thing for WWE cast-offs. There you go. <laughs> I also learned, uh, Garza also learned that Angelico is legit an angel, Angelico. An angel and can fly. While Lucha Underground gave me a truly heartfelt ending to a storyline that even surpassed Brian winning the titles. Uh. Carlin's learns that without the WMS crew around to bride entertainment, I fall asleep during WWE pay-per-view main events. Uh, Gar the Garza gives him shit. Um, so thank you, everybody. It chimed in there. The best place to do it is on the Facebook group. Uh, thank you, everybody. It was such a great conversation tonight. Thank you, Dustin, for putting the questions in. Thank you, uh, filling in the big question, of course. A great one tonight, guys. And even, uh, Riz, you're a bit... Why is rope? Why is rope? Why is rope? <laughs> Why is rope? Uh, anything you agree, disagree with, I know you, you have something to say out there, Mayhem Nation, at Mayhem Show on the Twitter or the Facebook group or the biggest places. You can find us on Facebook in general on the page and Google Plus or drop us a line to that email address of... Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com 412-206-WMS0 You can go over to WrestlingMayhemShow.com Check out everything going on all week long The Mayhem Minutes the, uh, We had a classic interview posted last week From Armando Estrada Sword, <laughs> sword puppet Haha <laughs> We're not putting Puppet up in the classics. <laughs> well, you can check out all that kind of stuff. And, of course, Midweek War, uh, WMS uh, uh, Raw Wrap-Up, and uh, so, so much more. We're trying to get more interaction, guys. Tell you what, hey, and I want you guys on the crew to check this out. I'm going to try. If, I can't tag you guys because I don't have enough room. But look for a tweet from the Mayhem Show for the story of the day for the Mayhem Minute, four days a week here, about 7 in the morning if you're up. You know, guys wow. are commuting. 
Well, you guys are commuting, right? Uh, Eamon, Eamon is sleeping, Sword. He is. It's six in the morning. I'm just no. going to bed, Sword. Seven, 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 seven in the morning Eastern. Eastern Standard Look time. for that tweet. It's going to be the story I'm talking about on Mayhem Minute. I'm going to take you guys to task because you didn't talk about the task thing. I thought I'd get some bites on that. Taskmaster. Um, Taskmaster? No, Taz. Jeez. Taz Sullivan. Anyways. Um, but look for that tweet, comment on it, and I may use your comment in the show for that day. Yeah, uh, subscribe to YouTube so you can catch that, and there's Mayhem Minute um, um, subscriptions on Stitcher and uh, and iTunes as well. So, with that, thank you everybody. Thank you, Mike Allen, for staying with us late and doing the notes at Mike Allen PR for him and so much more. Uh, Live wrestlingmayhemshow.com. You can join us in the chat, like so many have, so many joining us, including Garza, uh, Mainstream Matt, and uh, of course. Uh, wheels every week here. Um, stay tuned. Oh. Any Mayhem show, we're talking with Samantha Starr with Vicious Outcast Wrestling. Um, I think she's still a champion over there. And so much more. Thank you, everybody. Thanks at Mad Mike 483 that the E-Riz, at Bobby F. J. Town, at Amen 2 please Check out their affiliate sites, including at Insert Coin TV, at Inspire Pro Res, and PittsburghWrestling.com. We'll see you guys next time. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.